Welcome to Fireside Giants. My name is Zach with my co-host here, Anthony Rovardo. Today we got the man, the myth, the legend, Brian Walker here from DB Academy, you know, trainer for Jabril Peppers, Darnay Holmes, and now he just told us a new one, Xavier McKinney. He's got the whole giant secondary training with him, and it's it's pretty awesome to be able to talk to the source. He knows what they're doing behind the scenes. He knows the hard work these guys are putting in. And today we're talking about Darnay Holmes, one of the you know just premier slot corners that are coming out of the 2020 NFL draft, fourth round pick. You know, made a statement last year, a couple injuries, but he really showed that in some of these games he can be an elite slot corner for the Giants. Uh, Brian mentioned he could be the next Chris Harris, and that's kind of what we want to break down today. So, Brian, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing well, you know, uh, it's great to be with you guys and, you know, just talk football, you know, it's uh, right now it's an off season and just prepping and just want to make sure that, you know, get a chance to talk more football and have fun. So I'm doing Absolutely, well. man. I'm excited. You got, you got all the insider info. You've taken a look at all the clips we've sent you. Um, you know, this is, this is a guy, a young man who you speak very highly of. Um, he is an incredible talent. He has that mentality to be an elite player in the NFL. Um, and I and I imagine he's going to take a big step forward in 2021 after you got your paws on him and really refine some of those those weaknesses if there are any. Um, and I'm excited to break this down. Before we do that, Anthony, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. I'm excited to you know dive into some Darnell Holmes film. He's a player that I'm really high on. Um, I really like the way that he played in his rookie season. I really liked him coming out of college as well. I thought he was very impressive over at UCLA when he was still playing outside cornerback. Made the transition into the slot once he got to the Senior Bowl and then to the NFL. That's where he was starting this year, and that's very exciting. You know, a slot cornerback is just as important as an outside cornerback. There's really no difference in value there. So. Um, I'm very excited to dive into this film and see, you know, the potential elite slot cornerback of the future for the Giants. Yes, absolutely. And Brian, you know, when when you see a guy like Darnay Holmes, do you think he could play outside too? Because I know you, we've talked about this before. Um, you know, there have been smaller guys that play outside. You know, Denzel Ward is one that comes to mind. Um, I think, you know, you've said it before. He's a guy that I could see playing both if they needed him to. And maybe he should be in that CB2 conversation this upcoming offseason. What do you think about that? I think it's a great chance. I think the biggest thing just is the opportunity. I think for Darnay, he, uh, due to COVID, there wasn't too many chances for the off season to fight for position. So, you know, like a gentleman that he is, he just came in and, and tried to fit in and help out the team. Like I said before, in terms of size, you have a lot of great guys who were 5'8", Dow Green, and you talk about uh, even Antoine Whitfield Sr. He was a hell of a corner, you know, with Minnesota Vikings. So, you know, the size factor, Darnay's about 5'10", 5'11", and he's not a small guy. He can come up and hit. The outside corner will actually be an easier transition. He's been playing it his whole life, you know, so I do see a good fit. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's what we want to check out today. See, and we're going to see some of that aggressiveness you just talked about. He's willing to hit. He's willing to contribute in the run game, um, which you have to do if you're a slot corner, you know. So, and, you know, we saw with Grant Haley a couple of years ago when he was, you know, playing the slot for the Giants. But now you got Darnay, who, who we see him make a couple of open field tackles on some tight ends here. And it's pretty impressive because he's not, like you said, he's not a big guy, but he plays like he is a big guy. And that's what you want to see from a player. Uh, like that, the mentality, um, just like he's a football player. He's purebred, just a football player. It's in his genes. So it's awesome. You know, he's, he's fighting for it. And I'm excited to dive into the film, Anthony. So, you know, I will add it right now and we'll dive right into it. Yes, sir. So you want me to go first or are you guys? Uh... Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So if we can uh, just rewind it a little bit, just wanted to uh, just show the formation and just kind of explain how difficult it is, especially for any DB or even a linebacker, the way they are, they're in a bunch, which means they're very, you know, all, most of the receivers are close together to kind of confuse the defense. You know, one guy might go under, one might got go over. So Darnay, being a headsy guy, he's playing a certain area, but he's also playing a man. So he doesn't want to get too close to the guys who are next to him and who are playing the press, but he's locked in on actually like the number three receiver, which is closest to the, uh, to the offensive line. He does a great job. He squats a little. He sees their blocking. And he, the beauty of it is what we worked on in the summertime was a lot of stopping and changing direction and just bursting out. But that's just natural. That's a kid who's ran, who's run a 4-3, you know, speaking with his family and, and everything in high school. So you can see that burst and just change the speed. And, uh, you know, he did, especially third down, which probably would have been a potential catch. He actually broke up the ball. And, you know, that right there in itself just showed, you know, how aggressive he is with his hands. Most DBs, they'll just try to make the tackle. But even jumping on the ball, he's focused on the next play. So I thought that was a great job by himself, just being able to play inside, 
recognize that the receiver is showing like he's going to block, you know, and as it, as it pops up, you can see he's, um, he's, he has his eyes on the whole formation. He sees that receiver is going to act like a block comes right out and just that closing speed you cannot teach. And, you know, that's great for a lot of inside corners and outside corners. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you just said four, three speed. I did not know he was that fast. Um, yeah. That's sideline to sideline speed. You know, we see it right there. He's covering the flats. Um, and he, and he diagnoses that late, you know, he, he sees that that guy's way five yards in front of him, 10 yards in front of him. He catches yeah. up and disrupts the pass, makes him incomplete. That's impressive. Just from an athletic standpoint, you know, that's uh, let alone that the fundamentals that go into it, just the athleticism to be able to catch up and make a play. Um, we see that throughout the, throughout the film, he really gets his hands in great places to cause, you know, pass breakups. And he even gets an interception um, with Nico Lalos. You know, he, he disrupts that pass goes right in Nico Lalos's hands. Um, you know, that's just fundamentals. You, I, get, I imagine you're teaching. No, definitely. And right here, the next clip is three by one, three receivers on the other side. And you can see with, with Darnay, he's playing that, like I said, he's playing that, that nickel position, that slot position. And he's trying to make sure that he gets good leverage. So where he's at, he's, he's giving a little bit in terms of his right foot. It's just back a little bit just to give a little bit of a shuffle. He doesn't want to get out of the picture. So as it as the play goes on and transitions, you know, um, you can let the play, you can let the play go. So as it goes on, he he's sitting a little bit. The only thing I would say with him, he got caught reaching, right? Instead of um moving his feet. But like anything that happens, you know, a good receiver can always beat a good DB because they know where they're going. But he gets caught reaching. But like I said, his closing speed is exceptional. And he's in a he's in a point where as he knows he's beat, instead of him, you know, getting nervous or panicking, he gets right to the hip and he breaks up the ball. And so now I think they call the a pass interference. But as you can see in the next clip, the ball is way over the kid's head and it's not going it, to no one's going to be able to catch it. I think that was just a quick gun in terms of uh, the referees not not recognizing that the DB and, and Darnay was that close and that good. But everything else was played perfect. He went right to the hip. So. The guy made a great move. Darnay recovers well. It's no way he touched him. So that right there, you know, when they say he had a few penalties, you can see right there with that film, he just does a great job of recovering from taking a, a, a side step and getting right to the hip. So everything that we kind of worked on, you know, he was also taught that in college, but just getting right to the hip, making sure he makes that play and finishes. That's a big time play. And one thing I compared with Chris Harris is that change of direction. Like we talked about, a lot of guys can play outside because you have safety help, you know. But when you're playing that inside nickel or slot, you know, the safety's 10, 15 yards back. They're not going to help you when the routes are short. So like that right there, that post corner, he, play, he did a great job. So. It's sad too that they throw the flag. You gotta let these guys play, you know. Yeah, that was not a not a penalty at all. I mean, that was a classic Carson Wentz throw right there, right over his head. Ten yards. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. I mean, that ball was had to be what ten feet over the receiver's hands. I'll say it was a very nice route by the wide receiver. Nice post corner there. Um, but as you mentioned, Brian, that recovery um, by Darnay Holmes is something. You know, a lot of things you just instinctual he's an instinctual player and that's what i really love about him you know that that closing speed um i thought that was actually perfect coverage i don't really see him even touching the receiver towards the end there it just seems like you know he's face guarding but that's legal face guarding is legal and it actually looks like perfect pause right there alex yeah it looks like the receiver is pushing off with his left i think they thought he was grabbing yeah it was just bad they thought it was a terrible terrible call in my opinion i feel like that happened a few times this season with the giants and a couple times with darnay in particular so you know i think that's actually great coverage and you know, great recovery when he was uh, initially beat at the, the beginning of the route. Yeah, great point. Great point. You know, like like you said, just to just to feed on there, feed feed onto that. A lot of times receivers get away with pushing off, and you know, it just depends on the timing and what kind of uh, official you have. But yeah, he was there, and that was just a Carson Wentz pass. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, but like you said before, the closeout speed is what makes the difference because Carson Wentz sees his receiver open. He's like, oh, this is an easy, is an easy completion. I mean, aside from the terrible throw, but, you know, that should have been a completion if it was a good throw. But the fact that Darnell was able to catch up, it disguises the fact that he got beat. You know what I mean? Like he got yeah. beat off the line of scrimmage, but that makeup speed 
you know, that's like you mentioned before, that's something you really can't teach. That's just pure athleticism, pure like instincts and the change of direction too. And, you know, that is what makes him so dangerous and what makes him, you know, the potential so much uh, is so present um, because he can recover in situations like that. No, perfect. And just with the next clip against Cincinnati, it's 11 personnel, one tight end, one running back. The biggest thing I'm noticing that and talking with Darnay was uh, he's playing inside shade, which kind of for any quarterback can can say, oh, it's going to be man. And the biggest thing he talked about later on in the season is just making sure that he changes the disguises, not making it look like it's just man. And if he's going to play the nickel, be on the outside shade and just kind of he said, Ryan, he said Logan and Peppers were big in terms of teaching him that not just giving away the coverage, but here he's playing inside slot, especially with the Bengals. You know, uh, with a rookie court quarterback, and as we let that transition, he does a nice little shuffle, and he breaks right on the ball. I actually, I'm gonna be honest. I think he could have picked it off, but I think he surprised himself how quick he was there. You know, especially with that that throw. But uh, he did a great job of being patient, sitting, and recognizing the routes that's behind you. When you see sometimes, um, you see a guy beforehand or the running back motions out, usually. Number one's going to go deep. Number two is going to sit. So did a great job overall. Yeah. It ended up being an interception too. So oh. that was, uh, yeah, Nico Lalo ends up picking that ball off. Look at um, that. Look at yeah. that. Right. Like you mentioned, you know, it's the hand placement. So that really, that really is like showing off to me, just his ability to get those hands inside the catch radius um, and disrupt that pass is just, you know, the fundamentals that, you know, you're teaching. Just bam, he gets that intercepted. Yeah, that was a big play. That was a big play. And like I said, he sat on there. He was perfect. He was. He didn't bail out and did a great job. He's on his hip. Like he's like you can't get better than that. No, I need that interception. And I'm gonna I'm gonna mention <laughs> that too. But he's right there. That's picked to the house. He did a great job not uh, getting a flag, but everything else was good. It was great. Well, he did still force the turnover, so we can get him some credit there. Nice heads-up play by Nico Lalas as well. But one point that you made that I thought was really interesting, um, because this really ties into a conversation that Alex and I had like a couple months ago when we were discussing the Giants' defense and the way that Patrick Graham runs it. Um, something that Alex pointed out to me once was the way that Logan Ryan shades play in that free safety position. Oftentimes, Alex mentioned to me that he notices Logan Ryan likes to line up parallel to the sideline. He turns completely sideways and looks at the sideline before the play even begins, before he even gets set into a position. You know, this is another moment where he drops back into a deep coverage and, you know, he's kind of disguising what he's doing. But that's very interesting that you're mentioning, um, you know, how Darnay is starting to pick up on that and starting to disguise the way that he's playing the coverages and how he's shading pre-snap because, you know, that's something that we see is really effective for Logan Ryan. So great mentor to have there great teacher and it's great to see that that is already you know those teaching points are already um coming to fruition and paying off for darnay agree agree yeah it's, it's awesome I, I love to see those those uh veterans you know teaching even like jabril um he's still young in the league and he's teaching darnay holmes and that's going to make his developmental process so much more efficient so much quicker um that's why i think if there's anyone on the giants defense it's going to take a massive leap it's going to be him you know this offseason is going to be um, so important for his growth and all, watching all this film, watching it back. Like I imagine the next year, if this, if a team tries to make a throw like this on him, he's going to know it's coming. You know, he's yeah. going to recognize that earlier and he's going to take this to the house. Um, Pick six. Yeah. Um, and think about it. It will be, he finally will have an opportunity to be on, I don't want to say on campus because he's not in college, but to be at the stadium before the season, like he got there right when it started. So, you know, and Logan Ryan came right when it started. So a lot of the guys who were mentors and Jabril being still being young, you know, that was his first that was his first year with the Giants last year. So a lot of things having a new team, new coaching staff, new players to be around, no offseason. He did a great job. And I agree, you're right, Anthony. He did a great job. So right here, uh, as you can see, it's a bunch. It's two by two. It looks like it's two by two, but um what he's doing, he's playing a little bit of outside shade. I guess he's either sitting. So if you let that play, let it um, play out real quick. Boom, blitz. So one thing I was impressed with, with, with Darnay and even with Jabril, I can say, they do a great job of not just disguising the blitz, but getting to the point. 
You know, a lot of times guys can get there, but, it, you know, the quarterback releases it. They blitz like linebackers and, and DNs in a sense, or like an outside linebacker. But Darnay right there shows his burst. He did a great job. And as you can see, he's shading like he's going to uh, play that press, and he just goes. And for me, I felt like even with the the, the future clips and the, with uh, the Cowboys, Darnay, when he comes and hits the quarterback, even though he's not the biggest, he tackles and brings a boom like he's a – like he's Martinez or, or he's Peppers or, or Leonard Williams. He looked like a heat-seeking missile on this play. Yeah. Coming, I was gonna yeah, say. A, lot of, a lot of speed coming downhill there. Now, he yeah. did a great job. And, yeah. you know, like anything, it's just it's just clear 100-meter sprint. So, you know, the Giants defense did a great job of disguising a lot of their guys like we've spoken on before. And one thing I've realized, even with uh, I feel like how they're going to implement these guys next year, you don't know who's going to blitz. You don't know who's going to shade. And they gave the blueprint to Garden Seattle, even when we talked about uh, last time. So did a great job. Yeah, and I like how, you know, he doesn't go for the helmet. He keeps it low, keeps it to the chest, you know, just fundamentals, um, you know, keeping it legal. That That's kind of the important thing. You don't want to ruin a beautiful play like this by getting a penalty. You see so many players do that, like lack of discipline. Um, yeah. See a fourth-round rookie disciplined like that, you know, not going for the head, perfect shot to the body. Um, you know, that's that's what it is. And like you said, he plays so much bigger than he is. This is this is one of my favorite plays from Darnay Holmes personally. It's one of my favorite plays of the season because you don't get free runs at the quarterback very often. And when you do, you got to make him pay. And I I remember Brandon Allen taking this hit in the rest of the game. He was looking over his shoulder and, you know, he was making some mistakes after because, you know, he is worried about Darnay Holmes, five foot ten, just absolutely hitting him like, you know, refrigerator Perry over here. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great reference. Yes. And he's a professional. Like you said, he, he he's a team player. He's not going to use his helmet and get a flag. So that's a great point. Yes, the Cowboys. So, you know, um, one thing I can say, just just starting off with this rivalry, a lot of guys get nervous and speaking to a lot of guys, you know, whether it's on TV or it's, it's just a regular game, a preseason game, it's such a big rivalry. I feel like Odell Beckham's na made his name with this team. So with Darnay, not only would you just – guarding a slot, but you're guarding their number one pick and a guy who's probably a legend in the area. So you can only be as prepared. You know, you've probably seen the highlights and they've got this guy wearing number 88, which only three players have, have worn. So he's done a great job. And we've talked about in the past, his burst, this right here just shows, you know, that closing speed and how important it is. And, you know, mentioning Chris Harris, Chris Harris with the Broncos at the time with Champ Bailey, you know, he made his money, he made his name by just being able to do that, just burst into the ball and, and play in the slot. So, you know, I'll let it play out. Inside shade, he does a great job being patient, breaks right on that ball. And what I what I tried to work on with him and just not with, with the other guys is the easiest throw is an inside throw. You know, most guys, most quarterbacks, they can get that slant. Some some can't throw that fade ball as well, but they can give you a good slant. They can give you a good dig. So he did he did a great job not bailing out, sitting a little bit, understanding what the formation is, and even just recovering and actually taking away the proper hand. You know, so that right there, this this like pause clip right here where he changes direction. You know, C.D. Lamb. This is this is he's if I'm C.D. Lamb, I'm like I won this route. You know, yeah. Darnell Holmes is off balance. You know, that's suddenly he turns his shoulder and Darnell Holmes is catching up with him. You know, he's at four or three speed, that really, that really quick player. The recovery speed is what makes him so, so talented. So just, you know, unpredictable if you're a quarterback, you know, throwing a slant over here to CD Lamb, who you think is going to catch this ball. Cause not only does he catch up with him, but he gets his hands in there too. Like that's what I'm saying. Like the hand placement, like he, he gets that hand wrapped around and just disrupts it enough. Yeah. to get the ball dislodged. It's, it's really impressive um, against CeeDee Lamb. You know, he's a first-round wide receiver who is an, uh, you could say is an elite slot receiver at this point already. Oh, he is. And I feel like, you know, just working with Darnay, he's a student of the game. And I guarantee you he probably called one of his buddies, his old high school teammate. Uh, I forgot the gentleman's name, but he played on CeeDee Lamb's team. He was a DB, or number 44. I'm going to get the name soon. But, uh, you know, they probably gave him tips on how to, you know, guard CeeDee. Just make plays. 
Yeah, and if you go back to the other camera angle, Alex, I loved like that route by C.D. Lamb. You know, um, not to praise a Cowboys player too much, right? Because we're a Giants channel, but that's a great route. You know, um, this is a quick slant route, and he really does an excellent job here. He has Darnay beat, but again, we're talking about that recovery speed, that closing speed, that kind of thing that you almost can't teach, right? That speed, yeah. speed you can't teach, and Darnay has that. Those unteachable things, and that's what you love to see. And you know what? Even you know, transitioning to some something else. Uh, if you remember Green Bay Packers versus the L.A. Rams with uh, Jalen uh, Ramsey when he was chasing um, Devontae Adams, like they like to do a lot of motion. And I've noticed that with Jalen Ramsey, a lot of guys didn't communicate, and it's hard for Jalen Ramsey to go inside. And a lot of guys who are number two corners, they get exposed because they might get to number one. I feel comfortable if Bradbury might get a motion and he can't get over there on time, and it goes to Darnay, I feel very comfortable with Darnay guarding number one receiver, whether it's for one play or three plays, and be able to hold his own. So, like I said, this is a gentleman uh, in great route, like you said, Anthony. Uh, this is a gentleman who's the number one pick for a franchise that's America's team, right? And he does a great job breaking up the ball and just closing, closing on that and, 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 and continuing an opportunity for offense to get the ball. Yeah, and I like how he uses CeeDee Lamb as leverage to yeah. get around him. You know, he uses he puts that left hand on his left leg to sw to really use that. You know, he kind of propels himself forward to get yeah. that right arm in there. Um, you know, that's just like st like uh, again, you can teach that stuff, but to actually do it is not easy. You know, you have to be so aware of what is happening, how he's moving, when the ball's arriving, um, and like he looks like if you look at like just a second earlier. He looks like he's so far behind him too, like right there, yeah. like right here. This is a completion. You know, if, I, if you were to freeze this frame and show it to me, I would tell you this is a completed pass. You know, but the fact that he managed to dislodge that right there, get his both hands around his waist and then knock that ball out. I, yeah, I'd, I'd, you'd be able to sell me on this guy being a first round pick. No, no, and he's ripping that hip, that opposite hip. Like you said, you can see the red gloves on the hip. He's ripping it. He's ripping that thigh away, making CD feel very uncomfortable and just just a great job punching that ball out. Yeah, beautiful. Yes, the the infamous play that I, I've seen I a lot. This. Of I've seen a lot of highlights on this one. This is difficult. The, the the post corner is one of those routes where you know you don't know if the ball is going to come at a different angle, whether it's a zip or it's a you know a rainbow. And like we said again. You have a, a healthy Dak who at the time is on fire, you know, and um, one of these plays is, is just you get a guy like we talked about the motion, you know, now he's in a position where and CD doesn't even stop. He's still shuffling. So you don't know if he's going to go inside or out. And he just plays the ball very well. And you're by yourself on a just really on an island, not even an island peninsula. So he's he's literally. Handling his own, he's he's shuffling with him, keeping his feet alive. He gets right to the hip, breaks up the ball. It's nothing you can ask for. That's just great technique and just putting yourself in a better position. And the one thing I like to compare this play with uh, Darrell Revis. Revis is a 5'10", 5'11 guy, and a lot of times him guarding Randy Moss and the bigger guys who was 6'4", you're not going to out-jump that guy. But they have to get the ball down, and now with the new rule, you have to have two feet. It's not a one foot or you have to catch that ball, right? So as you can see, as CD's trying to get that ball and bring it down, Darnay doesn't focus on trying to out jump him. He focuses on breaking up that, that basket with the two hands and just kind of punching it out. He does a great job. I love right here the technique that he uses, you know, because right, like you said, he could go inside out. He's still shuffling. You know, he's doing that. He's just running that post to the corner. And what I like here is how he's behind him. You know, Darnay Holmes is behind him, but he waits. For yep. CeeDee Lamb to open up his body yeah. and give him give him you know access to that to that catch point. And the second he turns and opens up that body, because yeah, he has to do that unless it's a you know it's an over-the-shoulder catch, which would just be a ridiculous throw. Um, you know, this is just high, you know, get the ball, high point it. And Darnell Holmes just waits. You know, he's he's not he's not jumping too early. You know, he's not gonna get a pass interference on this call because he's not being overly aggressive. He waits for this body, his body to open up, and then he just shoots upward like a rocket to just dislodge that ball. You know, that's just good awareness. You know, we saw as Giants fans, we know Eli Apple. We saw him in the past, and his problem was he would never turn his head around. He would never he never knew where the ball was. 
And that's kind of what the problem was um, and why he never lived up to that first round value because, you know, when the ball was coming in the air, he would never turn his head around. He never knew where the ball was, so he would just get pass interference after pass interference. You see a guy like Darnell Holmes, fourth-round rookie, you know, doing this kind of thing, waiting, waiting. The technique is so good. The timing is so perfect against a great quarterback who's on fire, like you mentioned, and a great receiver who's in motion and moving in motion. You don't know where he's going to go. It like, it just, you can tell like he is a student of the game. That's a perfect way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the coverage here is perfect. He's right on his hip the whole way. And one thing that I'll point out, um, this is a great throw by Dak Prescott. It's high and away. If there's anywhere where CeeDee Lamb is going to make this catch, it's where Dak Prescott put the ball. Um, but then Darnay goes up there and he, you know, he dislodges it because that's, I mean, there's nowhere else to put that ball and actually make it catchable. Otherwise it's going out of the, the back of the end zone. So it's a perfect throw, but sometimes the coverage is just even better than a perfect throw. Yeah. And kudos to the referees, the officials of just letting the play go, letting the play happen. You know, like we said, we saw it before. I mean, this is a bang, bang play. I can understand if they threw a flag, but it was such great coverage. But just letting the play happen, especially during a red zone, usually they'll in Dallas Stadium, they're usually going to give it to these guys. But, you know, it's a great job, like you said. You can see that red glove up in there, too. You know, yeah. you can see that red glove up in there. And he's, you know, right there. He That red glove is on his hand almost. Like, there's no way he's catching that ball unless he's one-handing it, like OBJ. And CeeDee Lamb could probably do that, but, you know, not with this kind of physical coverage. Like, he's all over his his. Uh, you know, upper his upper body. There's no way he's going to be able to corral this without, you know, going to the ground hard and dropping this football. I'll tell you this, just for foreshadow. Don't be surprised. Darnay's in a slot next year against the Cowboys. The CD goes to the outside. Because you could tell they probably don't want to, you know, such a great matchup. They're probably not going to want to have him go through the fighting and all that. They're probably just going to have him going outside. Yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a tough hit. You know, he's... Darnell Holmes is landing on top of him. Mm -hmm. He's taking hits. You know, we're seeing <laughs> right there. You know, that's not that's you don't come up feeling too good after that. You know, and we've seen Darnell already lay a couple of nice hits on CD Lamb in this game, just just in, in coverage, not even tackling him with the ball, just coming down hard and aggressive at the catch point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's that's where <laughs> that's where he's going to make his money. You know, causing pass breakups and hitting the receiver at the same time. Agree. Yes. So. Now we, uh, we're in a three-by-one, as you can see. Darnay's on number two. Head up, putting himself in position as we let the play go. Nice motion. Don't get distracted. And you know what? I think the great thing that Darnay did this year, and we, we've talked about just the patience, he gives that shuffle before anything. A lot of guys sometimes like to bail out and open up the gate where we just pick a side, but he gives the shuffle, he gives that contact, and look how look how much space it is for the middle of the field, you know? It's like you literally are by yourself. You don't know if, in Dak being a mobile quarterback, he could scramble and it could be a part of the route. But Darnay does well in terms of getting the contact. Like I said, CD's a bigger guy. He doesn't fall, he stays in place, gives a shuffle, Rides that, rides that hip and just fronts him, you know? He knows, his, he knows where his help is at. He knows he has safety help up top, so he fronts him underneath. He did a really, really good job in terms of fronting him. Yeah, you're right. I mean, he's, he squares him off. Like, there's no throwing lane there, which is really hard to do, especially, like you said, so much room in the middle of the field for him to throw it to if he was going to throw it there, if he's going to lead him. And whatnot, but you know, Donnie Holmes is on his literally on his hip the entire time and, and literally just stands in front of him. It would have hit him in the back of the head if he threw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I like here, you know, um, CD Lamb goes out there and is really physical and he really tries to, you know, use his uh strength to try and get open here. But Darnay doesn't back down, he's physical as well and he's strong, so he kind of absorbs it and throws it back at him and ends up holding him at the uh at the top of the route there, which you know is a really impressive trait. And, and just you know what, like anything. Uh, often a great D line helps out any type of DB safety, and, and kudos to the D defensive line. Kudos to these guys and, and Coach Graham. You know, just just making sure that the pressure is there, especially with a four man front. So it makes it easier. You know, you can see Dak rolling out and not being able to see it. So great job to the D line. So now we're here. Darnay is in a different different position than before. Now he's playing the press 
press point. And he's playing a press point because the number two receiver's on the line. So if the number two was off, he'd be back in the corner and probably be up. But playing a press point, position himself. Now what the press point is, you have to make you have to make contact because if you if you allow that guy on the line to get a free release, it makes it harder for the guys behind you because now it gets cluttered. It's almost traffic, and then they can run into each other. So it's important that Darnay gets his hands. It's important that he's in front of the guy. If he's not going to grab him or get his hands on him. And so that's a that's a point where I could say, you know, from last year and the year before, you know, they didn't have that guy who could play that nickel. And, and look, shows a blitz, does a great job. So look, at the end of the day, what I wanted, what I wanted to show with Darnay, and he did a great job, is he plays it like he's going to play that press point. And as that motion comes, he does a great job blitzing, especially with one of the top backs in the NFL. He blasts Ezekiel Elliott. That was like Jabril Peppers against, uh, was it Chris Carson against Seattle? Yes. yes. Hey, like, what is it with these corners and safeties blasting running backs that are way stronger than them? I, I tell you this, there's a lot of similarities with Darnay and Jabril in just terms of how physical they are when they blitz. They get to that point, you think they're about 250 because these running backs are 230, 240. And, you know, the way Zeke runs so hard when he's always doing his little, you know, cereal bowl eating, I think it's it's a reverse type of situation. He literally knocked them back to a running back who bl blocks linebackers and gets a sack. So I love how he kind of lowers his head like a little bull rush too. Yeah. He really just lowers his head right into his chest play. And Zeke, I don't even think Zeke realizes how strong Darnay Holmes is. Yeah. You know, he he does not like he's squaring him up here. He's not he's not leaning forward. He's not trying to, you know, you know, just disrupt that bull rush. <laughs> I mean, he spearheads him like right into the quarterback too. I mean, that's that's how you create pressure, though. You know, that's the diversity a player like that brings. You know, the Giants love to be multiple with the way that they utilize their coverages and their players. And when you have a slot corner like Darnay Holmes, who is so aggressive, you can you can bull rush him against a, a running back like Ezekiel Elliott. That opens up your defense so much. And and why the Giants got away with not having elite outside linebackers this past year it really it really masks some of those deficiencies when you have guys. Like Donnie Holmes, who can aggressively rush the passer from a slot corner spot. Yeah, there's so much speed coming off of the edge there with Darnay, and then you know all that power as well. When we talk about him being, you know, a bit smaller, right, a bit a bit of a smaller player, well, he plays well above his weight class, and it's plays like this that we really see that um, come come out on the tape. No, it's a uh, he does a great job. I almost feel like I'm, I might even ask him if he wrestled because he has great leverage, you know, and. The way he he uh, absorbs contact and gets rid of it, it's uh, it's almost like that, you know, that pinball machine. He just goes right in and bounces right off and just keeps going. So, knocking Zeke off his feet—that's one you put on the right shelf. On, right on the heels. <laughs> right on the heels. And Dak is a big Dak is a big quarterback. Dak's Dak's not a you know he, he's not like he's you know Doug Flutie. He's a guy who can come right down and 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 you know bounce off a tackle. So not only to knock Zeke back, but to even get a sack on Dak is, is, a, is a heck of a job. Absolutely. I mean, he he pretty much allows this sack to happen just by pushing Ezekiel Elliott back. Dak yeah. Prescott feels it. He can see it right in front of him. And he, he forces him to step up into the pocket right there, right into Dexter Lawrence. Yes, you're right. Good. You know, so if Dexter Lawrence isn't there, that's just like the combination. Those, those two those are two young guys. You know, that's Dexter Lawrence in his second year and Donnie Holmes in his first year making plays like this against the Cowboys, Dak Prescott, and one of the best offensive Lions in the NFL. You know, that's, you know, and one of the best running backs. So, you know, that's just a set of lot. I think a shoe came off. I, feel, I saw a shoe. <laughs> so, once again, playing a slot position. He's um, playing a little bit off now, right? So, it's about, I want to say, five to six, maybe even seven, depending upon how far, just in judgment. But he's head up on a guy as we let the play go. Does a great job acting like he showed man, went right into the zone. So he played that, that outside linebacker cover three where you get to the curl the flat area. And beforehand, because he was blitzing, right, and he, did a, he can get to the quarterback, I'm sure they're worried to make sure that, you know what, he's not in front of the receiver. He's a little bit shaded. He's a little shaded out. But he does a great job, like I said, not really disguising it. I mean, well, disguising it like he's going to be, be in a man getting to that curl to flat, open, flipping his hips, seeing that it's a, 
It's a short route and breaking down on the ball and making a great tackle on a bigger man. Like we said, he's been playing bigger than his size. Yeah, I mean, that cover that cover three there, it, Dak Prescott, you know, if, if he doesn't cover that flat right there, that might be a long ball to the house. Yeah. So that's a you know, good job of him getting into that spot and disguising that coverage. Um, but also the open field tackling, you know, that's like the, te the technique. You know, Joe Judge loves technique when it comes to fun, uh, you know, just tackling in general. This is like the first time the Giants have practiced live tackling um, in a long time with Joe Judge. You know, this is the first time that's happened. So it's good to see that he's getting that work in in practice too instead of them you know just just going through the motions and not really going full speed and being aggressive because you know unlocking that aggressiveness for Donald Holmes is what's going to make him such a great player allowing him to play freely and really? you know this is a big this is a tight end you know he he squares him up here and he doesn't budge like uh, you know some guys might some guys might lean left or right go off balance and give that tight end an opportunity to skate around him but I love how he just squares up here he waits for him to make a move waits for him to try and spin away from it Mm -hmm. And he just goes for the leg, goes for the feet, and just takes his feet out. Yeah, and one thing I love here, you know, we always talk, Alex and I, we do, we talk about um, the disguise coverages that Patrick Graham throws out there all the time and how this this defense, we anticipated that it would be very man-press heavy, but it, it oftentimes last season was very zone coverage heavy and a lot of disguised zone coverage looks. And so not even just with Darnay, but with a lot of the rookies, it was very impressive to see how they handled that disguise zone coverage defense, you know, where there, there's so many moving pieces and they're always shifting into coverages that they're not showing pre-snap. And so it's good to see, you know, a high IQ player um, who can, you know, excel in a defense just like this because Patrick Graham's defense is very complex, not easy to understand off the, off the grip like that. So, you know, great to see that. And then of course, another, as you guys mentioned, great tackle right there on a tight end, a much larger opponent. And he takes him down very efficiently. No, uh, yeah, he, he he's a smart man because that's a guy who's probably 50 pounds heavier and does a great, great job in terms of, I, I call it a professional tackle. You're not going to put your head in somewhere where you can get hurt. He does a great job with the alligator tackle where as the guy spins, he spins with him, you know, goes with the momentum. He keeps his head up too. That's a great job. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the gist of all the film. I'm just going to let it run for a second. But, you know, we've seen a player – who's capable of doing many different things. I totally forgot about this Dallas game that we just watched like five or six clips from. And he stood out. Like he was he was the best player that I saw on the field in that game. Um, and it's really incredible to see, you know, a guy that young and other injuries kind of took their toll, maybe hurt his progression a little bit. But still, when he was on the field, it was impactful. We missed him a lot. And we and I remember missing him so much at the end of the season when he was out a couple games. I remember because they had McKinney, you know, the guy you're going to be training now. They had him playing in the slot, and he's not – that's not his traditional spot. You know, that's Darnay Holmes. That's where he was playing uh, this year. You know, that's where they were that, – that's where they were building him into be. And we missed him. I remember thinking – I was like, we're getting eaten alive by Jarvis Landry in the slot. We're getting eaten alive by these interior receivers, um, and we're missing Darnay Holmes a lot right now. So it really shows the impact he has on the game when he's on the field because you notice it when he's not on the field. No, uh, you made a great point. They did miss him. I think – now it's coming to light how important he was as a rookie because to not give up a touchdown, especially a rookie year, that's unheard of. And, and with this pandemic, no no offseason, no playbook, no what can I work on, you know, what I need to work on, no April workout. So, you know, he was put in a situation where he was thrown into fire and he reacted very well. And, you know, that, that Browns game that we did need, especially with uh, Jarvis Landry was doing a great job. You know, I I can feel confident enough that he would have, you know, been able to contain him because he did a great job against Lockett, against the Seahawks. Lockett had 200 yards that season on, I think, I don't know if it was the Cardinals or whoever it may be, but, like, you know, Darnay is one of those guys where he can only go up from there. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing, speaking with Brill, after a few of the games when Darnay was hurt was they needed him. They missed him because they couldn't really disguise what McKinley because he was young and, and, you know, he was hurt most of the time, but uh, no, that was a great point. Yeah. I mean, when you guys get your hands on him, I, it's going to be awesome to see. I'm so excited to see it. The, the quality that this secondary is going to get to, you yeah. know, after this off season with, with McKinney and Holmes healthy to start the year and having a full preseason to work with, that's going to be the big difference maker, not having those games. Um, is huge, not getting that momentum. I think we're going to see two jumps from players. And I was just talking about, I was tweeting yesterday, 
you know, Xavier McKinney finished the year against the last game against Dallas with like eight tackles, an interception, a pass breakup, a tackle for a loss. One of the nicest tackles for a loss I've seen um, from a guy in the secondary of the Giants in a couple of years. He blasted through CD Lamb and tackles a tight end in the backfield by himself. You know, that's Xavier McKinney for you, another aggressive Alabama product. Yeah. Um, and I'm loving it. Like, I'm loving these draft picks last year. They're really proving, um, you know, the injuries hurt, but. It, when they're on the field, it's a difference maker. You notice it. And, and Xavier McKinney, that last game of the season really said a lot. And, you know, Darnay Holmes, like we just said, we know we knew when he wasn't on the field because we were getting eaten alive in the slot. Well, you can, um, you know, just to add, in terms of the Alabama products, you know, judges from the, the Belichick system and um, Nick Saban and Belichick have a relationship. And I feel like Joe Judge is getting the character guys, you know, because uh, – Talent without character, you, you, you're you just roaming. And a lot of the Giants guys they're picking up have character and have the right character. They're not afraid to work. And especially when you mentioned live tackling and practice, a lot of guys sometimes just, you know, parlay and relax. But, you know, with the Joe Judge system and the Belichick system and the Nick Saban guys and, and even with a guy like Chip Kelly who experienced um, the NFL being Darnay's coach at UCLA, Darnay comes in as a great professional. Absolutely. I know, you know, some, some players might not like the live, the live uh, tackling drills. I know they in training camp, I know Cody core, you know, reserve receiver, but one of our best gunners, one of our best special teams players ended up getting hurt. Um, you know, doing one of those drills, you know, I, I forget what it was. It was literally on the, it was a goal line stop, like one V one on the goal line and they're hitting each other full speed. Mm. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's aggressive. It's, it's very physical the way that he's coaching these guys, but that's if you want to be an aggressive football team that rallies to the football that lays you know lays these hits down like we saw, you have to you have to train that way you know you have to train to be that kind of player. So I think you know we're seeing it uh, with Donnie Holmes, we're seeing it with um, Jabil Peppers and Xavier McKinney. I'm really excited about their future, man. But Ryan, thank you so much for coming on Fireside Giants, hanging out with us, and telling us a little bit about you know Donnie Holmes, what you expect from him, why you think he could be an outside receiver or outside cornerback too. Um, and I'm excited, man. I, I think that we have something special here. I think that he has all the traits to be an amazing player. And, you know, just I really want to say thank you again for coming on and talking to us. Always, always. And, guys, it's my pleasure. And, like I said, you guys are doing some great things. And I'm excited for the future. My family is a, a Giants family. They uh, they bleed uh, blue and red. So, you know, I look forward to it. I actually, uh, you know, consider myself, you know, a part of Giants staff, unofficial, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, like I said, again, I'm excited for the guys. I'm excited for, you know, our running back coming back. And, you know, talking with Chris Harris last year, what made me want to say Darnay was similar is because the demeanor and just how humble those guys were and they were willing to work and same size. So, you know, can't complain about that. So not at all. Not at all. So, you know, as always, thank you so much. And if you guys, everyone that listens, um, watch this video, you know, make sure to go hit up DB Academy, make sure to give them a follow on Twitter. I'll post a link in the description on YouTube. Um, you know, amazing as always to break down some film with you. I can't wait to get into some live stuff when next season comes around. Um, yes. you know, maybe talk to Darnay, talk to Jabril Peppers, yes, yes. Um, you know, maybe have them on the channel one day with you and break down some of their actual film. That would be like, that's what, you know, makes this channel elite. Cause we got guys like you who are just, um, you know, above everybody else and just, providing some really, really awesome insight to people that want to learn about the game. That's really what we're trying to do is just teach people about the game and getting it from the source. Um, you know, it's just, that's really special. So thank you for that. Awesome. Awesome. Anthony. <laughs> All right. I'm right here with you, buddy. Fingers <laughs> crossed. I'll let you know how it goes, man. Thanks. <laughs> All, right. All, right. <laughs> All right. All right, guys.